Hello everyone. I wanted to take a few minutes and show you how easy it is to set up the Zscaler integration. One of the obvious reasons you want to do that is to make sure that uh, any internet bound traffic complies to your own policies when it comes to content filtering, uh, but also is secure as well when it comes to any sort of threats. Zscaler is a well-known cloud security service, meaning that in order to enable it, you don't need a firewall on site or a virtual image and place that as a VNF on the edge. Uh, you will need to send all the traffic to one of their enforcement nodes. They call that Zen nodes. There are two ways you can configure this connection. Um, they both stand inside network services. You can configure it as a non velo cloud site. Uh, so this is where you use a gateway to connect, right? So you have all your edges or spokes uh, tunneling traffic to a gateway that's chosen to be as close as possible to the Zen node. And then the gateway itself will create an IPsec tunnel to the Zen node itself. Now in the latest versions of code, uh, code 331, if I'm not mistaken, uh, VeloCloud does give you the opportunity to initiate tunnels directly from the edge itself uh, into the Zen node. Uh, and this is found under the cloud security service. So let's have a look uh, at the configuration because this is already up and running. Uh, the way I know this is uh, I'm just going to go into network monitor uh, and I go inside network services here. So you'll see that I have two tunnels to these public IP addresses belonging to Zscaler. Uh, and this is derived from the configuration inside network services. So you'll see here, I'm calling uh, both IP addresses and provide um, a username and also a uh, password here for security purposes uh, that is masked. And this is reflected in my Zscaler portal here. So the same username, uh, this is where I set up my password. And the only other thing that I have set up uh, is a, a location. So inside here, if I type London, you will see a location, um, the time zone, and most importantly, the VPN credentials that the edges will use uh, or the gateway will use to uh, authenticate to the Zen node. Now, one thing that is not uh, particularly clear here is what uh, IP address or addresses, if I want uh, redundancy, I need to input uh, inside the orchestrator. And for this, uh, I had to Google uh, on how to locate the host names and IP addresses of uh, Zen nodes, uh, particularly the ones in my region. Um, so you'll see on this page that you have to go to ips.zscalername.net. And the Zscaler name is this word here between admin and net. So for me, it's Zscaler tree. If I copy paste that and I just say ips.zscalertree.net, I have already been on that page. On the second tab here, you will have uh, cloud enforcement node ages. So based on your region, uh, it will actually give you the host name. And you can actually use this host name to then convert to IP. Uh, one of the things that I've done uh, by mistake is actually use this uh, GRE virtual IP um, and the tunnel didn't really go up. Uh, but then when I did something like uh, host name to IP, you'll see that the address here, dot 38, is slightly off the dot 36. Um, so if the tunnel doesn't come up, uh, do uh, check the IP address. Now, one of the strong points of uh, using um, an NVS and go through the gateway is the ability to simplify the configuration because the gateway itself will uh, connect to the Zen node, not each edge individually. Uh, but also extend as much as possible the SD1 fabric and cover most of the journey with uh, DMPO. Now, the, the downside of this is um, each Z scalar tunnel is limited. So we have around 400 uh, megs. 
uh, for each tunnel. Um, so you might be running into issues. Uh, secondly, uh, the gateway might not actually be uh, any close to the Zen node, right? So the direct path from the edge to uh, the node would be far more optimal. And in this case, you will need to use the cloud security service. So I'll copy these IP addresses. I'll select Zscaler Cloud. I'll obviously give it a name. Now that the service has been provisioned, I'll go back to my home profile. Turn on the cloud security service. And then from here, I can specify what type of tunnel I want. IPsec is encrypted, GRE is not. Uh, we're talking about uh, internet bound traffic here. So uh, most likely the application itself uh, has encrypted uh, it. And the advantage of using GRE is that because it's non-encrypted, it leads to far better throughput. So IPsec is around 400 megs, while GRE is all the way to one gig. Now, once we select this, we have to go in uh, in the edge itself, outside the template, and configure the connection parameters. I will select it on uh, uplink here. You'll see here, although it's not really that obvious, that the IP address is already inputted because I did configure the CSS initially with it. What I then need to supply is uh, this information here. And this is something that Zscaler will provide because um, at the moment, uh, GRE is something that their support team need to enable. Unfortunately, I haven't got those details to show you, but uh, what I wanted to emphasize is um, how easy it is to configure the service. Well, last but not least, no matter what you do, no matter if you want to go direct or via a gateway, the only thing remaining is to go inside your profile and make sure you have a business policy that dictates that the internet traffic has to go to Zscaler. So in order for us to do that, we will create a new rule. We will say anything that is going to the internet and that, for example, goes to Facebook, I want to backhaul it to Either my non velo cloud side or my uh, cloud security service here. I will click it and then I will press OK. I did miss giving it a name. Now I'll drag this appropriately. Click Save, and that's it. In a matter of minutes, with the correct information, uh, I was able to create a tunnel to Zscaler and then push uh, the relevant traffic to it. OK, so uh, just to summarize, uh, there are two ways you can connect to Zscaler. The traditional way via a gateway, we call that NVS or non-velo cloud side, or directly from the edge itself. We call that CSS, cloud security service. The advantage of using a gateway is you will be able to extend uh, the SD1 footprint, right? So if something happens locally, uh, you'll be able to use the full power of the MPO to get the traffic across from the edge to the gateway, and then from the gateway through the IPsec tunnel to the Zen node. The advantages of uh, using a direct edge connection uh, is twofold. First of all, you might not have a, a gateway present in the particular country uh, and the Zen node might be closer to the edge 
um, so the gateway will just have latency but then also uh, when it comes to scale um, remember the z scalar throughput of 400 megs is per tunnel if you have 100 sites behind the gateway uh, the gateway will create two tunnels one in active and one in standby uh, and that thus will only be able to push up to 400 megs you can uh, somewhat increase that by having multiple profiles uh, and each profile pointing at a different zen node uh, and in that case if you have um, let's say your uk sites and your germany sites you can have uh, one profile for each country uh, and each profile tying in with a zen node that is local uh, and in that case uh, the, uh, the obvious result would be that uh, velo cloud will choose um, two different gateways and will create two um, different tunnels but if you don't want to be bound with a gateway um, you do it directly from the edge so each edge in itself will have a tunnel uh, and if you want to increase that tunnel capacity you can then use the GRE option I just showed you um, to go from 400 uh, megs to up to uh, 1 gig so pros and cons with both options uh, but now uh, you know them and you will be able to design accordingly. Now, one thing I forgot to mention, and uh, that's why I'm shooting this uh, small video, um, is uh, the fact that when you use a gateway, uh, it will connect to two Zen nodes. And we'll use the primary Zen node tunnel, uh, and when that goes down, we're going to do the secondary one. An edge itself can have multiple uplinks. Let's say we have three uplinks and two Zen nodes. Each of those uplinks will connect to both Zen nodes and will have the same logic of active standby. But this means that we'll have three active tunnels and three standby ones, and the edge will then be able to load balance across them. So um, another great example of um, how capacity uh, is increased when you connect directly from the edge.